Okay, we're going to look at question two from the 2018 A-level paper one from AQA. So table one here shows an experiment for de Broglie wavelength, how it varies with velocity v. Show that the table is consistent with the relationship uh, lambda equals, or lambda is proportional to one over the speed. So, um, if you're trying to do this, what you have to realize is that basically, if you're saying this, what you're saying is that lambda, oh, not proportional, equals k over v. So what you have to do is find k. So k should equal lambda v. Uh, so what we are going to do then is go 1.5 times 4.9. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ignore the that because it doesn't actually matter. Um, cause they'll, though you'll be multiplying by the same thing every single time. So 7.25 and then 3.5 times 2.1 Okay, and that really should be enough that you are demonstrating that it is consistent. Okay. Okay, uh, some so I would say that is consistent, even if this one here might be a bit of an anomaly with only three, it's still fairly consistent. <clears throat> so here. So you're going to go to your formula sheet for this one here to calculate the Planck constant. Oh, I closed my formula sheet. Uh, let me open one up. Right, lambda is h over mv, so h is lambda mv. So I'm going to use my first one here, 1.5 times 10 to the 7, that's my v, times 4.9 times 10 to the minus 11. That's my lambda and the 
mass is the mass of an electron. 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. Yeah. Okay, calculator. Well, that's just super. Okay, guess I've got to use my other calculator app. So 6.7 times 10 to the minus 34. Joule seconds. So we had a side view of an electron diffraction tube used to demonstrate the wave properties of an electron. Okay, so we've got a fluorescent screen. Okay, we've got a graphite target. I use graphite target because it is very well known the spacing of the electrons, or sorry, of the uh, carbon atoms in graphite. It's very consistent. So here you want the fact that you've got a um, an interference pattern. Ugh. Try to write neater. And it didn't work. Uh, interference. So you've got an interference pattern. Okay. Um, so, and it's the same as, light or EM waves would have, um, Okay, so if it was particles, you'd have like a, a, a concentrated patch in the middle uh, where it's a bright patch and then random scattering. So we don't have that. Instead, what we have is an interference pattern. Okay, and it's going to be, it's going to have 
a it's going to follow the diffraction grading uh, formula. Okay, so you can go into more detail about describing the, the interference pattern that you have a bright spot where you've got the constructive interference and you've got dark, uh, dark fringes where it's um, uh, destructive interference. Okay. Uh, and it, it really, it really is just because it is a, uh, you're basically firing it through a diffraction grating. Now here, this is interesting because it's also in a way showing that they are particles themselves. Um, and you have to look at it uh, as the fact that uh, every electron So the individual electron is carrying a certain amount of energy. So like if it was a wave, if the wave didn't have enough energy to excite the electrons in the phosphorus, they would never excite. So it doesn't matter how long you let the wave transfer energy. If it's not enough energy being transferred per second to actually move it up in the energy level, it... What that means is that um, the electron has to drop off a specific amount. It has to be enough to excite the electron. It has to be exa oh, well, not exactly enough, but it has to have enough that it can transfer the energy. However, exactly the right amount will get transferred when it excites. It's a very fixed amount. Uh, so. So it excites an electron in the phosphorus, okay? And then as it de-excites, you get a photon emitted. Uh, 1m. Okay, so you get a photon that gets emitted. Now, what we're also going to be what you should probably also talk about is the fact that it's all caused by you got the collisions. So it's all caused by a collision of um, a collision of individual electrons. So now remember, you're not talking about a photoelectric effect here because that this is a place where you often get confused by it. This is not the photoelectric effect. This is an electron exciting so a free electron that has a certain amount of discrete energy is exciting an electron that's in phosphorus so it's transferring some or all of its energy if it's got exactly the right amount of energy to excite it it'll transfer it can transfer all of its energy but it would transfer some of its energy that will cause the electron to excite and then when that electron in the phosphorus de-excites it has to give up that discrete amount of energy and it can only do that as a photon okay so that's question two